you have a, a, a male patient. Okay, so here you have a patient who had a previous lower limb operation and there is an implant inserted, presented with infected implant, okay? So uh, what is the definition of osteomyelitis? Um, osteomyelitis is the infection of uh, uh, the bogenic infection of uh, of the bone and the bone marrow. Yeah, so it is an infection of the bone and the bone marrow very simply, either biogenic or non-biogenic. Okay. What are the types of organism causing it? Uh, organism causing the most common uh, organism is Staphylococcus aureus, and uh, uh, there are uh, mostly in, in the age group of uh, an implant is uh, most common is uh, Staphylococcus epidemesis. And uh, according to each group, it's variant what's the most common, but uh, uh, mostly is the uh, Staphylococcus uh, uh, aureus, except in the age group of four uh, months to four years. The most common is uh, uh, Cangella species. So, so I, again, Obeda, you, I'm back to the same comment. I think you confuse me with the answer. You just need to be very direct and quick. All right. Okay. You say lots of things around the main answer. Wouldn't want that. You just want to see the answer very directly. So, pyogenic or non pyogenic, commonest organism is a staph aureus. Non pyogenic could be mycobacterium tuberculosis. That's it, right? You can mention uh, 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 salmonella and lots of other things which would be come here. Uh, you can say it in a different way, uh, like gram positive, and this includes staph, strept, gram negative, and this includes enterobacteriaceae and pseudomonas, and others. And this include, uh, sorry, uh, the anaerobes and the fungi and salmonella in sickle cell anemia patients. So you have two, two different ways to answer them, all right? So just pick one okay. and stick to it, okay? Because to be honest, okay. if, you're gonna, if you're gonna ask me now, summarize what you have said, I, would, I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know what you said. I just, you just kept circulating around the main answer and you said that the staph epidermidis is the commonest one. Which it's not. Which one in when there is an implant? Not really. It's a staph aureus. It's still the staph aureus would be uh, common, right? So okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't jump into this argument. Okay. Okay. Fine. Um, what is the source of infection? The potential sources of infection. Um, potential sources are including the uh, direct infection of the uh, by trauma or. Uh, or maybe homogenous from the blood bloodborne infection. Uh, oh, what this what this what I can remember. So so first of all, you mean hematogenous, not homogenous, Hemat right? Hem I'm gonna say it could be hematogenous or direct from the neighboring tissue or direct from the implant, direct implantation of the bacteria. Hematogenous that's sepsis or bacteremia. Direct from soft tissue, abscess or ulcer. Direct implantation from the bacteria into the bone during surgery, that's iatrogenic, or during maybe aspiration of a joint, or during an implant, okay? What are the commonest sites? The common sites are the uh, metaf metaf metaphysis uh, of long bones, uh, uh, and uh, metaphysis of long bones in, in adults, they may, may also uh, go going for uh, diaphysis in, in, in younger, younger patients. So adults are the vertebrae, or the commonest, and the children are the, metaph the metaphysis. Okay? So, okay? so exactly like what I'm saying, you just want to, you said four words here, right? The answer is four words. Vertebrae in adults, metaphysis in children. Done. All right. So just be careful. All right. Be careful. What is the pathogenesis of osteomyelitis? Um, invasion and inflammation. So and going for uh, necrosis and then sequestration and uh, a bone, uh, a bone, uh, a new bone of formation or the formation and even even going for resorption. Or, uh, uh, or for for chronicity.
So, Obeda, I think you need to really work on this, and I'm really sorry if I'm being harsh on you. Uh, you need to, to be very direct, and you need to signpost. By signpost, I mean you need to tell me what you're talking about, okay? You need to tell me an introduction about what you're saying. So basically, you need to start by the steps for pathogenesis of osteomyelitis include one, microbial invasion, to suppuration, to be necrosis, and newborn formation and resolution. Right? These are the five steps. If you want to explain further, you can go, even you can do it like that. Just let me just open the camera. In the exam setting, you can speak very confidently like that. Okay. So the steps include one, microbial invasion, and this is represented by a presentation of the organism into the tissue. Okay from an abscess causing acute inflammation represented by vas dilatation and, and that and that. Two, suppuration, which is basically pus formation and then subperosteal abscess causing severe pain. Three, necrosis, and this happens due to continuous increasing of the intraosseous pressure, and this can lead to formation of a sequestrum. Four, the newborn formation, and this is called involucrum. Five resolution and most of the so this is signposting, especially in the the answers that you do have a few steps. You will notice that I've done the same in um what in was ABC, the question? The question yeah, in the ABC, I, I basically have done the same. I said when the patient had the liver tear, I said, Well, so first of all, I would like to go and see the patient and do Another advanced trauma, trauma life support, making sure the airway, this and this, the breathing, and just signpost when you're answering, that will make your answer more clear. You might be saying amazing things. You might be saying the right things, but I'm not actually listening because you're not signposting, you're not getting me involved in the answer, specifically if I'm an examiner who examined 20 or 25 students before you. Okay, so you need to be a little bit more different and give me the answer in a few. Okay, fine. Um, okay. Why may pus burst through the bone? Uh, the pus may uh, burst through the bone because of the increased uh, interosseous pressure, uh, which which uh, cause uh, a cloacal opening in the uh, involucrum, uh, uh, bursting through it to the skin. Okay, can you define an involucrum? So, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be very silly here, all right? So okay. here in, in in the answer to this question, first of all, you started by repeating the question. That's wasting yeah. time. Okay. Second of all, you ended by repeating the question. So you said, I, I'll tell you exactly what you said. You said the pus may burst through the bone due to increase in the intra osseous pressure, forming a cloacal opening into the involucrum, and this will lead to the pus being burst through the bone. This is just wasting time. You just have to be very direct, okay? So the cause is due to increase okay. in the end of pressure, especially, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying this because especially if you're not a native speaker, if this is not your first language, if it's your first language, you can repeat it and you will say it very quickly as well. Okay. But if you're really struggling with the language itself, you need to say the right amount of words, okay? I am, I am sure. Can you define involucrum and asquestrum? Involucrum is the new bone formation around the asquestrum, uh, uh, forming a living shell around it. And sequestrum is the defoscarized bone that is formed from uh, necrosis of the uh, bone uh, in the necrosis or uh, sounding bone. Okay. Fine. Um, what's your plan about the implant? What's your plan about the implant? Uh, the implant? 
uh, Rembrandt uh, to be removed and take a, sa a sample, a, a, a swab sample for cultural sensitivity from it. Why? Because the, the plan is uh, maybe loose and loss of its function and a septic focus uh, with uh, a biogenic, uh, biogenic bi biofilm uh, around it make it harder to, 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 to treat. To treat it with antibiotic, okay. What okay. is the diagnosis of a swollen knee? Swollen knee, uh, osteoarthritis or septic arthritis, pseudo gout, and uh, maybe going for a tr trauma or reactive arthritis from, from rheumatic arthritis or uh, other, other causes of reactive uh, swollen knee arthritis. And how would you investigate a swollen knee? To approach a swollen knee, going for uh, um, uh, imaging and and uh, uh, laboratory imaging and uh, X-ray uh, the first, and uh, aspiration of the of of the fluid for cytology, um, a gram a gram stain and uh, cultural sensitivity. So you said imaging and then aspiration. Okay, that that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And when you say aspiration, uh, you're gonna send it for cytology and chemical analysis as well. What are the types of crystals in gout and pseudo gout? In gout, is, it is uh, uh, sodium ureate crystals, and in pseudo gout, is uh, calcium biphosphates. Yeah, moon sodium urate crystals and the calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Okay, why is CC represented sequelae of osteomyelitis? Chronic irritation from osteomyelitis uh, may, cause, uh, uh, may cause dysplasia in uh, 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 carcinoma development. Yeah, what is the chronology of events? Can I say it again? You started by dysplasia. Is dysplasia the first thing? It's, it's, um, chronic, um, um, chronic inflammation from osteomyelitis going for hyperplasia first, then dysplasia, and then uh, anaplasia is what is going for uh, carcinoma. But what what about metaplasia? Does it have any role to play or not? Uh, metaplasia have a role if the, squamous, if the tissue of origin is not uh, uh, squamous. Uh, uh, in the first place, so uh, we are talking about uh, irritation of the skin is going for no role of metabolism here. Well, I think there is, to be honest, maybe it's not written there, but there is hyperplasia followed by metaplasia and then dysplasia. Uh, I think there is. I think it, it's a metabolism comes after hyperplasia. Uh, treatment options for osteomyelitis. The patient going for antibiotic according to trust uh, uh, trust policy and uh, an, an advice from a microbiologist, mostly is uh, cephalosporin and pomoxiclave, uh, and uh, also the patient to have to uh, have unsupported treatment of energy, of pain and dehydration, and splinting and embolization of the of the of the limb. If the patient is responding with antibiotic treatment for two days, he's, he's going for uh, drainage and uh, er, uh, irrigation of the osteomyelitis. Those lines. Okay. That's it for today. Thank you. So, antibiotic supportive splintage.